What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's fish tank. Bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna attack tank two at All Tech here. This is the close to the window, close to the sun, close to my heart, planted tank that has dirt. I haven't touched this tank since a couple days before Christmas. This is being filmed in the end of April, so four months, no Dustin. Time to come in here and do a little bit of cleanup. I'm gonna show you some of the algae problems that we've got, some of the dirt problems that we've got, some of the fish problems that we've got, and how we're gonna fix it all. We're gonna start by just your basic excavation, then we're gonna move ourselves into a little aquascape zen mode. These are rainbows that I bred in the greenhouse myself. They're doing quite well. We got a couple of loaches in here, so we're gonna unpack a lot of stuff in this video today. Here comes part one, excavation. Then we're gonna do a little aquascape action. Then we're gonna talk about fish. The dirt has gotten above the sand. How did the dirt get above the sand? How did the dirt get above the sand? Answer, the golden digging dojo loaches. It's not a problem, because those loaches are about to come with Dustin. But uh, while it looks rough on the surface, and this is the downside of a dirted tank, we can just get rid of all that and then siphon it all out and then add more sand on top and it will be fine. Some of the plants are actually doing quite well in here and will be uh, accentuated once we're done with this. Think of it like a plant, think like nature. This is actually really, really good for the plants, so I'm not concerned about it. We obviously had some die off on some stuff. They had a big algae problem, but we just blacked this tank out for four days and all that algae has died. So it's actually gonna be easier to work on. But step one, let's get it cleaned up. Let's get it pruned up. And then we'll do some replanting. People can see what we're working with here. I've got four buckets, five buckets. The man Patrick over there has a big uh, bucket of water already been sitting out. So it's at temp. So we're gonna drain out, let's call it 30 buckets of water, or excuse me, 30 gallons of water or so and then let it settle out and then do it again. And what you want to do is you want to work one section here and then kind of let it settle out and then move over to another. And then the trick will be eventually this plant growth, which is phenomenal by the way, will be so good that you will hardly see the dirt. So that'll just grow real thick. But you see how I got this cloud here? And this has the algae on it, so we can... And with an Amazon sword, anything that looks rough, just pull off, because it's not going to grow back. That's most plants, actually. Just grab whatever's nasty, because this is not... That, that's not going to heal, so just pull that off. I think it's very important to emphasize that I did a five-day blackout on this with the horrible algae problem. That's just so huge. You gotta kill everything. I believe there is some dirt on here, which if the dirt lays on top and has no water flow, that's gonna get you algae. But once we kill it, we get it out, because you don't wanna have an ammonia spike, because you'll just start the cycle again. So we are getting that out of there. water is not whipping hard enough to pull all that out of there, so we're going to get a bigger pump from our friends at Fluball or Manana. And it's pulling it out, but not as much as I'd like. I'd like for it to just go whoosh, so it can't even really settle. The fish will like that too. So that's the plan tomorrow. We'll bring in a new pump, more gravel, more sand, and get it whipping. And this just hit me, I want to throw this out here. One of the things that's doing well in here, play to your strengths, what's working. That's what I always tell people. Whatever's working, do more of it and kind of advance from there. The sword is working. That was a tiny uh, major sword. Swords are working. We're going to add more swords to this. The sag is working. We're going to continue to hit the sag there. And the val is working, but we're going to get some different val. LOD, of course, it's working. So more swords, I think, would be great because they get big, they get huge, relatively low maintenance. I've got them. Uh, I can get some red ones. The crenum are doing okay in here. It's actually a crenum that tans thinned out in there, but bigger swords. 
bigger swords, more crypts. I've also got some giant Anubius Barteri, which would be super easy to do in here as well. So we've got some options, but big dirt eating, uh, fast growing sword, just big sword, big sword, big sword, I think would really pop in here. This is the problem. That is the 12 hour timer, 24 hours around half, lights are on way too long. So we can fix the problem here, but that is the problem. The lights are on too long. And I just cut that back to like five hours. It's a better move. Okay, so this is an extremely sick fish. This is a fish from Alltech. This is a Golden Dojo Loach. Why I don't have the Loach shirt on? Excuse me, frog, I'm trying to make a video over here. Can you keep it down for a minute, lifeguard? Thank you. So, as I was saying, this is an extremely sick fish. This is a Golden Dojo Loach. This fish lived at Alltech and is not doing well. I think I can heal it and I've got the stuff to heal. This is Metrodized All Flakes. Shout out to Mike Barber in the uh, Restazonia area, Reston, uh, Air, Virginia, wherever the heck he lives. I uh, went to Peru with him. He told me about these flakes. These flakes are older than most people watching this video, but these are Metrodized All Flakes. We're going to feed this, do this. First things first, man, we gotta get him healthy. So we're gonna put him in the basin, or excuse me, the fish tank right behind me. There's all kinds of crap to eat, and he'll start eating that. Then we're gonna feed him exclusively Metrodized at all flakes, because he's so skinny that he is clearly not doing well. We wanna get him fattened up. Like that, frog interrupting my video. I'm trying to make a video here, Mr. Frog. So why would I put him in this tank? Well, there's a ridiculous amount of stuff to eat. So he's gonna go in here by himself and he's gonna chill. And he's not doing so well, he doesn't like this transition. So we're gonna get some oxygen in the bag and we're gonna get him in here. So this is a happy update on a fish. That is a golden dojo loach that has horrible internal parasites. I got back from uh, the tank at Alltech and he has a little bit of a bulge in his belly which is a good sign, which means he's been eating like a boss. So he's not full yet, but he's clearly been eating. He hadn't been eating, and now he's eating well. I didn't think he was gonna survive, but he is doing good. So I'm super jacked about that. Eat up, big dude. Get back to healthy. Look at that. So today, we're going to play in this aquarium some more. I was going to hook up a pump, but I decided I don't trust uh, not monitoring a pump over the weekend, hooking up new plumbing. Just I'd want to be around and check on it and everything, make sure it's not leaking. You don't want to leave a place um, and potentially have a disaster over the weekend. So not going to do that. But what we are going to do is we are going to clean the heck out of the tank. We are going to add a bunch of swords. And then Monday I'll come in early and I will add a new pump, uh, which will cycle all day long or whatever and then we can monitor the situation over the week and make adjustments doing it on a Friday afternoon is not the best move but what we are going to do here is we are going to add uh, a lot of plants we're going to add a lot of swords and then after we get everything planted in here we're going to do another cleanup job on this bad boy so I work left to right so we're gonna add a bunch of swords over here move a little bit of valve and get it going the lighting on this tank is two of my standard double LEDs. That's a lot of light. In fact, it's too much light. And the problem is they do tours through here and they want to show off the tank. Well, the tank always has to be on. Well, that's obviously not great, which is how we got the algae problem. So we're going to reduce the algae, reduce the photo period, and then we're going to run the lights less, add more plants, clean it, and then just kind of uh, have Eric figure out like when Eric or Patrick figure out when they're gonna have a tour, turn the lights on them, but you don't wanna have your lights on 12 hours a day. I have been three degrees from the equator in Peru. It's not full sun 12 hours a day all the time. Excavation first. Move this valve to the back. And you always wanna undo all this stuff on here. Copa Caroliniana yellow flame, nice red. Grape roots, it's an all-star plant for us. And I commented on it that the major sword was doing major league well. So we're gonna continue, do more of what's working. So I've got these major swords right here. It's the 
major sword. That's a bow. And for this, I'm leaving these on because I don't want to go too deep into the sand and they were kind of floating up. I just want to make sure they stay down. I like the major swords because they have that bright yellow pop. Or bright yellow, like that lighter green lime pop to them. And I want to stick with that theme, so I've got some Tropica swords that I'm going to put in the front up here. And then after I make a big mess, I'm going to vacuum siphon the whole deal. Check out the roots on this Ozolot. Love it. Always want to leave some touch up sand. Put another sword in the center there. I'm actually going to put this one in the back. I'll need to bring another major. I thought I brought enough of them, but. And this is a cool one. This is a, a marbling on it. I like this one. This has a little. Uh, coloring of red and in dirt it'll do real well so it'll it looks like it's got problems but it's actually a red coloration coming through and that'll get tremendously stronger with the nutrients of the substrate which we have here and you can see that there's a nacris floating all over this I'm gonna let that float because it is doing us good absorbing excess nutrients and blocking out light and just looks a little messy. Rainbow fish like it. It's doing the tank good, so it's going to stay. It's a really monster valve I'm going to put in the back, although the valve decided to come up front. Giant valve in the back. I'm going to leave this bound, but I am going to loosen it a little. And on swords, you want to remove anything that's discolored or whatever, because it's not going to do the plant any good. If you've got new growth at the center, that's all you want to focus on. Focus on the center new growth. So all this outer stuff, it's like this yellowing right here, that can go, that can go. And then the bigger the roots, the better. This has monster roots on it. Now I'm going to go into excavation mode. We've stirred everything up, which is fine. Now we're gonna add a bunch of sand over here, just to, that side has a problem with a lack of sand. Add more sand here, that'll stir everything up, and then we'll suck a bunch of water out. This sword in the center here is a little too big, a little too much. I'm going to kind of move it back. When I planted it, it wasn't that big. A little tenellus for the foreground. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get as much of that out of there. Now the problem is it's going to settle again, so there's going to be a lighter layer. You know what I mean? Like, see how that kind of settled down? We're gonna get as much of that out of there as we can, and then add some more sand on that side. And then we add water back. We'll only add water in through the uh, sump. And what we should do is let this settle out. You know, go through, do the initial pass, and then let it settle all everything settle down, and then come through and do a slow siphon on everything. But. We're gonna add that pump on Monday or something, so. And I don't normally rock wet dry filters, but came with the design. It's working out pretty efficient, actually. I just wanna show this setup here. They hooked this up. They got a rolling cart full of dechlorinated water. I'm just gonna run a siphon to it from here. Show that setup there. That's siphoning out there, down in there, through a loop, and the water level is lower. So that's going down into there. While that's going, I'm gonna throw the rest of the sand in just because I have it here and needs it. It's already a mess, so we're gonna sand it out. Looks 
we got the algae under control. Did a nice big water change. We have removed a lot of the dirt that got on top of the sand thanks to the Golden Dojo loaches. They're all now out of here. We have added more gravel. We're going to continue to add gravel when you have a dirty tank. Sometimes the dirt gets above. Add more gravel and then remove the dirt that settles on top. The flu ball pump has been running for 24 hours. Uh, it is doing awesome and it is cycling the water here. So what I'm going to do is add a couple more plants in here, add some more rock in here. It's gonna go completely cloudy again, but this is how we're looking right now. This is the end goal with just more gravel up here, but you wanna make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. We're gonna add more gravel, which is gonna cloud the whole tank, but now we got a big pump, so this should be good. Got some uh, nice plants to add. We just gave the fish some food. Now it's time to rip into it. This tank has Euro bracing around the edge of it, which is great for structural, but rough for adding stuff to it. Can't quite get in as good as I'd like. And I would have liked to have gotten the plants in first, but I want to have more gravel available to hold the plants down. So, trash the tank right out of the gate. This place, by the way, has it hooked up. I've got a whole bunch of water in there waiting for me. So all I've got to do is uh, get this in here. I can do a big water change, drain it down a little bit, and then come back and plant. So I'll lower the water level down with the cloudy water here in a sec. I'm gonna move over to this side right here. Always leave some gravel aside for touch-ups. Don't use all your gravel at once. Leave, I'm leaving a good 10 pounds out here. I know I'm gonna touch up in there, but I'm gonna wait to get this thing uh, drained, settled out, removed, gonna get the anacris out of here, take it down about 50%, and then proceed further. I could stick this whole thing in the tank, but I got a cut on my hand, so I'm gonna use the suck method, because um, I've got good timing. So, oh, we talked about it. <laughs> Dude, that's what I get for mm -hmm. on camera. And I just realized this is an overflow system and I'm going to stop the overflow, which is not good because the pump's going to run dry. So in a second here, I'm going to stop because the pump's going to run out and I'm going to slide this out of the way and kill the pump. And by the way, the rainbow fish love big water changes. Rainbows love big water changes. You can see the pumps spurting water, or spurting bubbles. That means it's about that time. But I got two siphons rolling, so I'm just gonna let it run for just a second. And the nice thing about it too, in a second here, you'll see how I siphon back down into the sump, it's very easy. And if I had more time and could come back, I would have let this settle out with the pump off, but ain't nobody got time for that. That's off. Pump is down there. It will back siphon out of that until it goes down to that level. So it's gonna go back in reverse out of the output down. And we're gonna let this sit for just a second. Maybe let it settle for a tiny bit and then drain this and then come back and do another wave. That is the beauty of the sump. You have to lug the bucket up low. I'm going to kick the filter on. I don't know if three buckets is enough, but that'll get it going again. Fish look pissed. And I use the powder ACCR. Better. The rainbows go nuts. They love the water. They love the pump. Will it slowly start like filling? Yeah, up? it'll slowly. It is actually pumping right now, good question. So it's pumping there. And you wanna aim, I'm aiming it down, and then it'll eventually start to gurgle. It's pumping water out of there. The plant can grow through the foam, so foam is okay to keep on. And I love this plant. It's a red sword. It's grown above water, but it'll have Nice nutrients at the roots here, and it should do really well. We're gonna try a little bit of triple red in here again. It's 
cleaning up pretty quickly. I'm actually really impressed with how fast the pump has cycled through all that. Now we did add 20 some gallons of water, but I'm liking the speed in which it's cleaning. Agropola Compact. Same roots on these. Touch up gravel in the center, which is hard to do because there's a brace right there. You can't just drop it straight down. I tried before to put a little wiggy in the corner. I'm going to try again. Trenum in there, by the way. Solid plant. Actually, I got these Wendell that are going to go down in there. They don't like to be down in the gravel, so you got to kind of just very Tuck them down. Man. Look at that land. <laughs> Nailed it. They're going to go around the base. If I had more time, I'd wire these up and make a big old Wendell off tree. Notice I'm not putting these down in the substrate though. They're just sitting on top. Then I'm going to grab the gravel, hit that right there, and take a break. Drop. One of the nice things about these overflows is that you get these pads that can come out. This is the clean one. This is a new one going in. So that just comes right out. So that can go no bueno gone. Did a hard working pad right there. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's good. Just find that in there. Did you see that? That was in the, that was in the filter. Week. But now we run this filter pad through there again, and then I'm gonna get this out of here. So that's a nice thing because it's just filters everything right through a pad. You can dispose the pad. It's a definite benefit of an overflow filter. Yeah. 